Good morning. First of all, I wanted to thank Professor Cittadini for inviting me uh, to come here. It's, it's a pleasure to, to be here. We have been good friends for a long time, and uh, Palermo for me has always been uh, a place where I, I like to come. Um, the topic of, of my talk, and, and apologize because uh, I have been placed today because I could not make it to come earlier, so uh, sorry for that. Um, the topic of my talk today is uh, stem cell research. Uh, obviously, stem cells um, are becoming now a, a field in which, in many disciplines, um, we can find applications. There's a lot of research being done. There's also some not so good work being done with stem cells, clinical work, which is not based on, on real science. And I will try to update you on what can be done or what uh, is being done actually in, in stem cell research in the field of uh, assisted reproduction. These are my disclosures, and this is the outline of my presentation. I will, I will first talk about gamete generation from pluripotent stem cells. I will focus on pluripotent stem cells in the first part of my talk, and then move to other stem cell types uh, at the end. The second part of my talk will cover IPS cells as a disease model in infertility, and as I said, uh, at the end I will cover some of the real applications nowadays of multipotent stem cells for cell therapy in human reproduction. Let me first um, introduce which kind of cells I'm, I'm trying to, to talk about. Uh, these are constituted by the group of pluripotent stem cells, and these cells are embryonic stem cells, both human and mouse in that case, and iPS cells. As you can see here, embryonic stem cells, and as you know, come from embryos. They were generated in, uh, in 1998 for the first time, and they are um, the gold standard of pluripotency. Uh, the other cells that we uh, will be talking about are iPS cells. These cells, called induced pluripotent stem cells, were discovered by a Japanese uh, scientist in 2006, and uh, they are generated by the overexpression of certain reprogramming factors that are very essential for pluripotency, and these cells have the same characteristics as uh, embryonic stem cells, and these characteristics are the possibility to uh, self-renew indefinitely, and uh, uh, they have, have the capacity to differentiate into uh, different cell types, all cell types except the extra embryonic tissues. So these are the main characteristics of these cells. If, um, and these are videos, maybe um, they can assist me. Anyway. Uh, what you see here is some of uh, the ways these cells can differentiate. These cells, what you see now, have become cardiomyocytes, and they beat onto the microscope. Uh, controlling certain uh, culture conditions, you can make them, sorry, you can make them um, be converted into different cell types. And the second video that you will see is a time-lapse video where uh, cells uh, from a colony of embryonic stem cells have become neurons. And this is a three-day uh, videotape, if it works. Anyway, what could be seen in here is how these neurons escape from the colony and uh, get extended in, in, in the, in the culture dish. Um, what you see in, in this slide is also that these cells, these pluripotent stem cells, can be converted into gametes. If they are pluripotent, they have to uh, be able to be converted into oocytes and into sperm. And this is what we are talking about uh, in, in, this, in this presentation. So going to gamete generation from pluripotent stem cells, the first thing that we need uh, to, to be aware of is that uh, Making gametes is not something that is really simple, especially in, in the female side. You can see in this slide, and I recommend um, this, this uh, review by Sai Tu, where it explains not only how these cells um, become morphologically located in different places and become different cell types, but also what are the mechanisms that lead to the conversion of the, of the pluripotent stem cells into, into the gametes, and 
what are the genes and the transcription factors that are essential for this. This uh, shows you the complexity of, of, of the event. Another important thing that we need to take into account is that if we want to prove that a gamete that we have generated is functional, we need to be able to demonstrate that it can fertilize or it can be fertilized. This is obviously very easy to be performed in the animal models. We can try to fertilize a mouse or site that we have generated or, uh, or from any other species except the human, but in the human obviously there are ethical um, considerations that need to be taken into account before trying to do that. And as it is the final proof that finally this gamete is functionally uh, acceptable, this is uh, something that we need to, to consider before uh, trying to get into the application of that. Going first into what has been done in mouse oocytes. Um, they have, there are different papers. Uh, there is a, a, a group uh, in Japan that is doing most of the work. This is the group of uh, Saitu and, and Ayashi. They have published papers in 2012 and 2013 showing that they were able to convert these pluripotent stem cells in primordial germ cells and then from that, uh, putting them um, in co-culture with uh, cells from, from the gametes you want to produce, in the case granulosa cells or testicular cells, they can obtain both oocytes and sperm that are fertile and can, can give rise to, to offspring. But in that case, you need to transplant uh, these, these cells into their niche. They need the niche to be converted into, into the cells uh, you want to get. But uh, later on, and this is in 2016, so, so two years ago, uh, the reconstitution uh, of the entire cycle of the mouse female germ cell like uh, was uh, demonstrated. In that case, there was no need to uh, use the niche, the in vivo niche. So only by using, I don't know if I have a pointer. Only by, by using uh, somatic cells, uh, in that case, gonads from, from, from the mouse, and putting them in co-culture in, in, in the in vitro situation, they could obtain in vitro genesis, differentiation, growth, and maturation. They obtained offspring from in vitro generated eggs, and not only that, but they reconstituted the, the entire cycle, because with the embryos that they produced, they started again the whole cycle. So this is a very relevant paper that shows that all sites in that case can be obtained uh, uh, completely in the in vitro situation in the mouse in the mouse model. Going to the sperm, more or less exactly the same situation. I will not go into the details. Again, primordial gen cell likes are produced. These cells show markers of, of these, of these uh, progenitor cells, and these cells, when transplanted again into the niche in the uh, in vivo situation, they produce uh, spermatozoa that have normal uh, morphology and that can give rise to healthy offspring. And then the second part of the story, exactly the same as we had before, in the female side, they can do the same thing, uh, but in completely in the in vitro situation. So complete meiosis from embryonic stem cells uh, in, the, in the mouse model, and these cells can produce viable and fertile uh, offspring. Uh, in those cases, this has been done with embryonic stem cells, but the same thing can be done with IPS, in fact, so um, no problem about that. Um, much less work has been done in the human, for obvious reasons. Um, there is one relevant paper in 2012 where they produced, uh, where they showed that they could be able to um, direct differentiation of human pluripotent stem cells into haploid spermatogenic cells, but in that case, at the end, they only showed that these cells were haploid, and the, the, these cells showed markers of uh, spermatogonia, spermatocyte, and spermatid, but they did not try to fertilize uh, any egg with, with them, uh, as I said, for, for reasons uh, that are obvious. Going to um, the, second, the second part of my talk, um, le let me tell you that we have now a fantastic uh, tool to try to understand diseases, and this is constituted by iPS cells, but these induced pluripotent stem cells. 
As I said, these cells are created or generated by the overexpression of certain transcription factors that are essential for pluripotency. And what you can do is, in, a, in any disease that you want to study, you take a cell from the patient, a cell from any tissue or from any organ, and you convert the cell into an iPS cell. Then this iPS cell, and this is what is shown in, in the slide, this iPS cell can be converted into the cells of interest in the disease you want to study. So uh, if uh, there is an affection in, uh, I don't know, beta cells or in neural cells in the disease that you want to study, this is the cells you are going to differentiate into. In the case of, of, of uh, infertility, what we will do is to try to produce gametes from these iPS cells from that specific patient. And with that, what we will be able to do is to try to perform cellular studies, uh, we will do transplantation studies to have the disease in vivo, and we can even try to, to, to um, it's find out if certain drugs are candidate drugs for this uh, specific uh, disease. Uh, some uh, some um, examples of that, uh, both in male infertility and female infertility. Obviously, the, the diseases we want to study must be of genetic origin, obviously, because these will be reproduced in the iPS cells. And in the case of male infertility patients, we have Y chromosome deletions, X-linked mutations, and also the somal mutations that lead to infertility. And in the case of female infertility, certain genes have been found to be responsible of premature ovarian failure and premature ovarian uh, insufficiency. Again, and I, I, the, the, the schematic representation is exactly the same. What we do is we produce uh, from skin or other organ biopsy um, iPS cells through reprogramming. These cells are differentiated, matured, and gone through meiosis in the case of infertility. And what is uh, the idea is to try to find out what are the different problems that may arise during all this process and comparing this with the normal uh, situation. If on top of that we add another, another uh, technique, and now uh, genome editing has been optimized with the use use of the technique of CRISPR-Cas, you can try to invent any kind of model to try to, to model uh, the disease of, of infertility and also other, other different problems. There are papers that have been published with that. Um, in that case, they, they obtained uh, iPS cells from azoospermic and, in, and fertile men, and they transplanted them into murine uh, seminiferous tubules, and they showed that uh, the development of these cells were compromised in the case of infertile men. And as I said, this constitutes a, a, a fantastic model for, for infertility in, in, in that case of genetic uh, azoospermic men. Uh, other things that have been done, and this is uh, in, the, in the female, um, taking cells from uh, primary uh, ovarian insufficiency women, they generate uh, um, iPS cells, and they show that these cells show a reduced expression of certain uh, genes that are essential for the production of, of oocytes. So at the end, again, the model works uh, quite well. Going to the uh, final part of my talk, uh, I will uh, tell you about what's the actual use of adult stem cells, essentially mesenchymal cell cells. These cells are not pluripotent anymore. These are multipotent cells. They are different from the ones I have talked before. And some of them are already being used uh, in cell therapy in, in, the fa in, in reproduction. They are being used for four different uh, indications. They are being used for erectile dysfunction, vaginal dysfunction, uterine abnormalities, and also premature ovarian insufficiency. I have to tell you that most of this is still at the experimental um, level. Uh, in some cases, there are already certain um, clinical trials being put in place, but with very preliminary results that have to be taken um, with, uh, with care, because we cannot say that uh, up to now we have um, solutions for, for many of these, of these problems with the use of stem cells. And also, I take the opportunity to, to tell you that it's not only in infertility, but in other, in other fields, stem cells are 
being used most of the time, uh, mesenchymal stem cells are being used in a way that is not um, essentially, I would say, very scientific. They are used uh, in a way without knowing exactly what the cells do, uh, if they are integrated or not, and what's the, the, the final purpose of the therapy that they are doing. Not only that, but also these cells can also even become dangerous for the patient. And we have had cases of um, people becoming blind or having um, uh, collateral problems because of the use of inappropriate uh, cell therapy. So let's be careful and not use them if we are not uh, convinced and, and sure that we have demonstrated their, their ability to, to be useful. Uh, erectile dysfunction, uh, there are different papers. This is one uh, from 2016 where they, it's, it's a, a human phase one trial with autologous adipose derived, uh, derived cells, mesenchymal stem cells, and they have some good results in which men recover their erectile function. It seems that this is a safe procedure and it seems that uh, the, there is a significant improvement in the scores that they use to, to measure this uh, erectile function. Here you have a, a summary or a review paper in which uh, they show the different, the different um, studies that have been published so far. You see that the number of men that have been treated is, is, is not very high. And as I said, the results seem to be um, good enough, but uh, let's say that, that this is still very preliminary. Vaginal reconstruction. Um, the, the, final, uh, the final conclusion of what I have been looking at is that there are no human studies so far. It's an experimental technique. Um, this has been done in the mouse and in the rat model, and it seems that these cells could have a role in trying to repair uh, certain uh, problems that arise in, in the vagina, but again, experimental technique and not human results so far. Cell therapy in the endometrium, and this is something that does, was published by the, the group of EV in 2016. They, it's a pilot cohort study. Uh, in those cases, they treated patients, um, uh, you see the age, 30 to 45 years, with refractory uh, Asherman syndrome or endometrial atrophy. They mobilized these cells um, with a system that is used uh, regularly, and they were, these cells were delivered into the spinal uh, spiral arterioles by catheterization, and what they tried to look at was the restoration of menses, endometrial thickness, addition score, neoangiogenesis, and ongoing pregnancy rate. The result that they obtained uh, were quite good. Um, all patients with Asherman syndrome exhibited improved uterine cavity with better endometrial characteristics. Uh, in four uh, out of the five patients with endometrial atrophy, they also showed an improved endometrial cavity and endometrial thickness. Three patients become pregnant spontaneously, and uh, they obtained also seven pregnancies after 14 embryo transfers. So um, in that case, it seems that this methodology could be um, a good approach to try uh, to solve these this endometrial, uh, endometrial problems. Now I have brought um, four different papers. Again, I'm not going to go into the detail because this is not the purpose of my talk, but to, to try to, um, to see if there is also a role of these, um, in that case, bone marrow uh, stem cells, uh, to try to restore uh, ovarian function. This uh, has been done in the mouse, and the results that they have obtained, it's a paper of 2018, it, these are not, uh, I would say, very high impact papers, but anyway, they show that these cells are able to restore uh, injured ovarian function uh, by inhibiting apoptosis and promoting residual ovarian cell uh, proliferation that may be the, the, the mechanism of action to try to obtain uh, these uh, preliminary results in the, in the mouse model. Um, again, another paper of, of this year, and in this case, they tried to show by uh, using peripheral blood mononuclear cells isolated from uh, premature ovarian insufficiency patients and healthy control to try to compare them and to see if the cells they put in contact with the cells of these patients uh, contribute to a change in, in what uh, these patients uh, had as, as a problem. Again, the, resu the results seem to be 
quite good, but um, let's say that uh, in this case, uh, we need to take the, the results with, with caution because, uh, again, they are quite preliminary. Um, the final, the conclusion of, 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 of this uh, the review that I have performed with mesenchymal stem cells uh, therapy for recovery of fertility seems to say that further studies are needed to assess the efficacy and safety of the transplantation of these cells in fertility recovery, both in the male and in the female. These, uh, these reviews constituted by, at the end, 53 papers, and uh, the results that they obtain indicate that more studies were performed on mesenchymal stem cells obtained from bone marrow and umbilical cord, and the different evaluations show that they might have a role in the recovery of both spermatogenesis and uh, folliculogenesis. So as a conclusion of my presentation, I would say that with regards to generation of gametes from pluripotent stem cells, um, successful completion of male and female meiosis has been achieved in in vitro conditions, completely in in vitro conditions. It's an experimental procedure that has been done successfully in the mouse and um, probably they will progress towards possible future application in the human. We will talk then about in vitro gametogenesis uh, uh, with regards to in vitro fertilization. We will not try to fertilize gametes, but we will try to produce the gametes and then fertilize them. And this will uh, change completely the scenario of uh, infertility. We will have new indication for infertility treatments, such as in couples with no functional gametes at all, homosexual couples that can reproduce uh, among themselves, or even in postmenopausal women where you can obtain oocytes by the use of these pluripotent stem cells. I have shown that IPS is an excellent tool to be used uh, for, uh, to study infertility. IPS generation is now um, something that is being done in many laboratories uh, in the world, and it is a technology that is uh, available. And uh, cell therapy with adult stem cells in reproduction is already a reality for certain indication, promising results in um, endometrial uh, problems. Um, it seems that it, they could have a role in, um, in some other dysfunctional patients that are affected of, of infertility, but um, the, the main concern in this approach is that there are no data on what are the mechanisms that are involved and what is the cell fate after transplantation. And I think that more basic research needs to be performed before we use these cells uh, in this way. Uh, we need to understand what they are doing and we we need to understand the mechanism uh, of action um, to try to use them uh, properly. And that's all. Uh, thank you again for your attention. Uh, and again, sorry for, for being late to, in my presentation. Thank you so much. So let me move to the second.